what is up fellas hopefully all is well jps delivers here ncaa 08 texas a&m franchise number two in the country florida going to be facing lsu in death valley lsu now three and two after that win last game but five and oh number two team in the country tim tebow percy harvins brandon spikes carlos dunlap and company um, going to be going to death valley should be a really good game oklahoma atop of the conference standings i believe they've already beat texas in the red river showdown um, but a&m right there sitting right behind nebraska i believe for conference standings even though nebraska has lost one game but looking at the heisman watch number 14 quarterback for penn state getting things done in a familiar face right there in jamal charles with the university of texas a man who ends up beasting and feasting having career just legendary games in the NFL for the Kansas City Chiefs. Wide receiver number 22 of Bama, Chad Henney. And then another familiar face through the B.J. Simmons campus legend would be Chris Beanie Wells. Just a sophomore, I believe, at this point for Ohio State. Already one of the more talented running backs in the country. Already probably one of the most strong quarterbacks in the country, or uh, running backs in the country. The dude's a beast. He beasts. He feasts. And the man's going to find himself in the Heisman race even next year. Might be the Heisman winner. But we're still looking at recruiting here with Parquet, him and Vogel Powell for our D tackles. So uh, we're going to be losing a lot on the defensive line. We still have a young Von Miller as a freshman who we have redshirted. We're going to try to make him very, very strong because he's already highly athletic when it comes to agility, his acceleration off the snap, and his overall speed. But we really need to get those two D tackles right there. Um, Vogel Pal and the Vogel Pal brothers, strong safety and D tackle, boost up that defense um, because this AM team is going to lose a lot of players on the defensive side of the ball. The offense is probably going to have to put up tons of yardage next season, but hey, like Bill Belichick has always said, we're going game by game, baby. And speaking of the current game, it's Oklahoma State 4 and 1. Here on national broadcast, 79 degrees clear. It's considered not so humid as well, even though, let's be honest, we're near Houston, southeast Texas side of the state. It's quite humid out here. Even if it's 79 degrees, it probably feels like 90 degrees in Arizona. But a 5-0 and Texas Aggie team, only number 20 in the country. Not too, too much respect in the polls, but however, though, the competition really hasn't deserved that much respect either playing Montana State, Fresno State, without even either of the Carr brothers at the time. Derek isn't there yet, quite yet. Um, but now we're going up in conference play, fellas. Oklahoma State, I believe it was a win against Baylor last time out, if I am correct. But Oklahoma State, this is before the Zach Robinson era with Des Bryant and company, what we're going to see in the next few years. Um, that's what I'm expecting anyway. Zach Robinson's still a pretty good player. Him and Gerard Johnson sitting as the backups to uh, what you see of this starting quarterback, number 14, on Oklahoma State. And Steve McGee, who's been beasting and feasting for this A&M team. And speaking of a player who hasn't had a great start of the year, it's been mainly at a linebacking crew, a little bit of a sprinkled in right outside linebacker, number 28 but mainly left outside linebacker number 37. That's his name, but he is going to be credited as the middle linebacker for this defense. He's easily the top tackler on this defense. But right now, making the highlight, it is Matt Dodge, linebacker number 50 on this defense, and then a nice little run to the outside by Javorski Lane. It's going to get about five yards. And then Stephen McGee, the man is always known as a dual-threat quarterback, really more so a guy who's a dual-threat game manager for Texas A&M. Guy would never put up great statistics. Maybe that was because the coaches just didn't utilize him well enough, but the guy, he was a, hey, he was a tough dude, and he was definitely athletic as well. I think he's got like 82 speed or so, um, but we're going we're gonna to see some speed of other players later on in this game, but a touchdown to start it off. And right there, nice play to wide receiver number nine. It looks like quarterback number 14 getting in a groove. He's going to hit his man. No, he's not. Star wide receiver right there. Not able to chase down what seemed like a pretty good lead pass on that one. Open on the dig. But it's going to be A&M ball. And as quickly as that, it's going to be Oklahoma State ball here on third down. First sack of the season by D tackle number 96. But, I mean, honestly, it could not come better in a better game than this. Two teams that are pretty evenly balanced, I'd have to say, when it comes to talent. 
Um, pretty pretty damn close when it comes to record as well. But Kendall Hunter, running back for Oklahoma State, gets lit up by Mr. Bryant, number 85 on the defensive line for this Texas A&M team. But speaking of just good players on the field, he's not the impact wide receiver, but he's a man who's put up quite a bit of stats already in this game. Six attempts by the quarterback, number 14, 56 yards, and a beautiful, beautiful pass down the field. But, hey, I mean... The secondary is definitely the weakness on this A&M team, but we've been able to fight very hard. It's one of the best front sevens in the country, and sometimes, sometimes we're able to get a little bit of highlight plays on the other side of the ball. Texas A&M gets an interception right there by cornerback number 43. I'd have to say he's probably been the best performing quarterback out of all of them, and then right here just scares the living crap out of me. Uh, not the fumble. It was the play, bef pretty much the highlight and the uh, camera cut before that. But it's still going to be Oklahoma State's ball anyways. Wide receiver number 12 on the end around about six yards. And then he's going to hit his impact player once again now here on the first down. First and 10. Kendall Hunter down the field. But what a shot by the man. We were talking about him before. He's a guy you want to highlight before the game. I know Stephen McGee in this offense has been playing quite efficiently. But it's really this front seven that has been playing at an elite level not giving up any more than, I believe, 50 yards per game on the ground. And then right there, as I say it, it's going to be the secondary that gives up the touchdown on that one after that nice tackle by linebacker number 37. It's going to be a touchdown reception by wide receiver number 9 on Oklahoma State, but it does get blocked. The PAT only going to be 6 points for this trip, 6-7, to seven, just about half a minute until the end of the first quarter here. Steve McGee juking around, moving around. He's going to make a mistake. It's a guy that, like I said, he's a game manager, an athletic game manager. But at the same time, though, if your game manager is giving up the ball like that, you're going to run into some issues, especially what I'd have to say is the first official test of the season for this Texas A&M team. And Stephen McGee just been a little bit of shaky. Little shaky to start off this game. Quarterback number 14, going to find his man. Wide receiver number 9 is going to be an easy first down. However, though, Texas A&M defense is going to get lucky right here. It should be a holding penalty, and yes, it is. It's going to be about a 29-yard swing on momentum, but it does not matter. On the very next play, wide receiver number 12 just gets hit right there. And what is supposed to be coming into the season, the best cornerback on this Texas A&M team, cornerback number four. The man isn't known for playmaking necessarily, but he has been pesky and getting a decent amount of pass deflections, but just not that time. Bad timing, bad animation right there on the deflection. And it's going to be an Oklahoma State touchdown. I believe it's the first time all season Texas A&M has actually been on the losing end or at least down on points. I thought right here they might have made up for that missed extra point, the previously blocked extra point by sneaking that one in for two, but it's going to be another one. So it's only 12 to 7, but damage is still done. Oklahoma State leads. It's the first time AM has given up a lead so far this season again, but just like that, I say it, he's pretty much got a stampede behind him, but he's not, he's not headed their way, so who cares if the stampede's behind you, fellows, or the avalanche? If you're not getting caught up in it, don't worry about it. And speaking of it, it's going to be a touchdown by wide receiver number eight. There is more to come from him in the passing game. Nice little run right there by Kendall Hunter. About nine yards and now on third and one. Nice, nice blocking by the wide receivers. These guys were just kicking A&M secondary's asses. And what a broken tackle. I mean, two star players facing each other, but unfortunately, I'd have to say the crowd goes silent, but it is Texas A&M at home, not Oklahoma State. So it's going to be an injury on that one. Quarterback's going to be out, but guess who makes an appearance in this one? Zach Robinson runs the option after getting the first down, but fourth and five right here. What's Zach Robinson going to do? He's barely going to sneak that. That could have easily been an interception by Peterson, the cornerback number 27 on this defense, but he's going to sneak around again. We're having so many dual threat quarterbacks, especially this time around in the Big 12. Nebraska's got one. Texas A&M's starter. Same thing with Oklahoma State's starter. And not only that, the two backups for this Texas A&M team and the backup right here, Zach Robinson's going to sneak into the end zone. Just gets down, gets a little bit ahead of himself. But hey, just like he's ahead of himself right now, his team is ahead of Texas A&M 18-14 before the extra point. They should be able to make it this time. Three's a charm, I believe, right there. 19-14. Yes, they did make it. 
And now this defense is rolling. Gets a nice sack on that one. Second and 17. Stephen McGee's going to light this one down the field. And what a catch by wide receiver number eight. The man was still in the zone from his kickoff return. He's still feeling it just under two and a half minutes here in the second quarter. Going to run a no huddle. Usually a team that likes to manage the clock. Likes to be efficient down the field. Goes no huddle. But unfortunately so. It hits the hands of the man. I mean, you have to imagine... Just the sheer power of this hit right here by the cornerback number seven on this team. What a hit. The man that he was jarring that out of his hands was in the zone. Speaking of, he gets destroyed again on that one, but he does hold on to the ball. Will be a short fourth down opportunity, and they do get the first down right there. Stephen McGee, just over a minute and a half left in the first half, and he's going to hit arguably the most talented player on this team, Martellus Bennett. We talked about Michael Bennett before this game. Right in, number 11 for this Texas A&M team. It's really his brother, though, that shines for this offense. A man that doesn't get a high volume of targets, but he has highly efficient targets, and he just has progressed so, so well. He's come into the season. I think he was the number one tight end in the country out of high school going to Texas A&M. I think he was in that same class with Gerard Johnson. Now 21-19, to and that could have been picked off right there by linebacker number 37 but it's going to be a first down for Zach Robinson in this offense but beautiful play by cornerback number 43 we saw him get a pick earlier but now running the play action what's Stephen McGee going to do he's going to throw it to his man that he's been dependent on pretty much all of this half flag on the play what is it going to be I believe it's going to be holding right here I think it is left tackle number hmm who is it nope it's going to be center number 70 the guy's a senior has some of the best awareness on the offensive line, and that time he slips up <clears throat> and a huge play for Texas A&M is going to be taken back. I mean, that had to be a 60-yard swing on the momentum on that play. Huge, huge pass taken back, but they're going to try to aim for him again, and it's going to be a drop pass by this man. He wasn't technically in the zone, but he was flashing, and now here we go, Stephen McGee. Just, hey, in this situation, we've seen him fumble the ball before, but unfortunately, he doesn't turn it over, but the unfortunate part is, is now... We see quarterback number 14 on Oklahoma State knocked out of the game because of his knee. It's going to be Stephen McGee knocked out as well because of his elbow. It's just two unfortunate er areas to get injured as quarterbacks in this video game. And right there, Gerard Johnson comes in, a man with 89 speed. I mean, the number one athlete in all of high school recruited by this A&M team with Franchiboni and company, Mr. O'Neill or Mr. Neal, going to get the reception right there. Turned in about 10 extra yards on this play, and then right here, the athleticism. Number one athlete, a guy who can throw the ball beautifully well, getting things done. It's going to be a highlight play, easily 20 yards on the run. Gerard Johnson, we saw Zach Robinson show off, already has one or two touchdowns, I believe at least the one rushing touchdown for Zach Robinson in Oklahoma State since he's taken over. But Gerard Johnson right here does get sacked. But he's been highly efficient. A man that came into this game with no sacks has now have two sacks on the game. I don't know how this was not a touchdown, but it is what it is. But this team just showing up, this Oklahoma State team, Javorski Lane, and if anybody gets knocked down twice, twice by this defensive line, but it's going to be Mr. Alexander. Arguably, I mean, with this A&M team, just highly run focused, keeping the ball, not having to throw it very far down the field. Two of their best players is the fullback to help with the running game. And also Martellus Bennett, one of the better hybrid tight ends that can catch the ball off the offensive line for this A&M team. Alexander's a beast. And now it leads to seven more points for Texas A&M. 28-19. Remember, it was only 21-19 to at the end of the half. But here it is. Probably the best playmaker out of everybody. What a combo of moves. There are two jock straps on that field. Over there at their own territory. <laughs> Those guys got destroyed, fellas. Those guys got destroyed. That was embarrassing. But it was more so beautiful by him. And now D-tackle number 92 going to come in for the block field goal of his own or extra point of his own. That's going to take a point off. Only 34-19. to 19, But hey, a commanding lead after what has been a tight-knit matchup between these two for opening play. I believe so for the Big 12. And right here, Zach Robinson trying to get back to work for this team, trying to make up for the costly energy or injury. But we're seeing some costly energy to the physique 
of Zach Robinson as Mr. Michael Bennett. We saw Martellus earlier with the highlight catch in the end zone on that nice little corner route, but now it is the man who eventually goes to the Seahawks and is part of that dynamic, dynamic defense with Bobby Wagner and company and, of course, the Legion of Boom in the secondary. Beautiful sack on the play, and it should be another sack right here by D-tackle number 95, who has actually been the surprising player between him and Mr. Bryant on the defensive line. Bryant was the defensive captain named here in the preseason for this defense. Um, probably the most talented player on the defense. However, though, um, it's been more so the show for linebacker number 37. And speaking of the show, speaking of athleticism, speaking of stepping up, Gerard Johnson takes it to the house. Easily a 60-yard run on that one. Huge, huge play. And now this lead has gotten even larger. It was, I believe, 34 to 19 before. It should be 41 to 19 after this one and the extra point. Gerard Johnson shows up for this team, and honestly, this Texas A&M defense shows up as well. And speaking of, quarterback number 43 had a huge interception earlier, while quarterback number 14 was still in the game, and he was balling out with great momentum in the red zone. And now we get beautiful awareness on the defensive side against a wide receiver who has kind of roasted him for the most of the game, but uh, getting things done is this Texas A&M offense now. Here comes the part to where efficiency matters. Getting down the field, getting, I think it's one of the best third down teams in the country, and here on third down, throws it to his man, wide receiver number five. Third down, another conversion, number one team in the country, and you wish that he was able to hold on to this one. A lot of drops by this wide receiving crew. We know it was one of the more weak points of this offense coming into the season, but at least we've seen a little bit of light when it comes to playmaking ability here today with Gerard Johnson. And of course, through the first five games with Stephen McGee, what's Mike Goodson going to do? One of the easily one of the best playmakers on this team, and he gets it done. And speaking of him getting it done, 27-0 to zero deficit in the second half. This A&M team, do they give them a little bit more respect now in the polls? I know this was an unranked Oklahoma State team. There he is. I guess his knee's feeling a little bit better if he has no damn crutches and he's over here congratulating that ass-whooping of the second half. But Gerard Johnson steps up, and we know Gerard Johnson at his peak was a better performer than Stephen McGee right there. Seven for nine, 70 yards, has easily 100 yards on the day. I'm looking forward to him the next few seasons to come. As always, fellas, take it easy.